Hello and welcome to Grace Covenant Church. My name is Pastor Katie. I'm one of the pastors here on staff and we're really excited to welcome you to uh, a multi-generational, a multi-ethnic family style church here in South San Francisco. In addition to GCC at Home, which you're joining us for today, we have regular online small groups, we have special events, ways for your kids to connect, and people praying for you. You can find all of this information and more on our website, gracecovssf.com, as well as ways to directly reach out to someone on staff. We would love to meet you, uh, even if it's virtually, and get you plugged in a little bit more and introduce you around our awesome community. Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Angels we have heard all night Sweetly singing o'er the place And the mountains in reply Echoing their joyous ways No In a shell's day old No In a shell's day Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? What the gladsome tidings be, which inspire your heavenly song? Lord, oh, 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 in each chalice's day, oh, Shall sustain all. Come to Bethlehem and see him whose birth the angels sing. Come adore on bended knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. No. Shall sustain all. See him in a manger laid, Jesus, Lord of heaven and earth. Mary, Joseph, lend your aid with us, sing our Savior's birth. No. Shall sustain your glory. Be that shall sustain glory. Be that shall sustain your Oh, come, let us 
adoring. O come, let us adore Him. O come, let us adore in Christ the Lord. Sing choirs of angels, sing in exultation. O sing, O ye bright host of heaven above. Glory to God, glory in the highest. O come, let us adore Him. O come, let us adore Him. O come, let us adore Him. to Thee be all glory again. Word of the Father, now in flesh appearing, O come let us adore Him, O come let us adore Him, O come let us adore Him, Adore in Christ the Lord. Hello, guys, my name is Jenny. So the shepherds were watching their sheep, a flock of sheep at night. It was so dark. And then an angel peered on them and then they said, ah! And the angel said, no, no, don't fear. Great news, the Savior you have waiting for is born today. And at, at Bethlehem. Yeah. And then a bunch of angels came and singing and praising to God. And then they went to Bethlehem. They found the baby wrapped in cloth, Jesus. Hey everyone! Wasn't that the cutest shepherd ever? Now, when before when I was talking with Jin Lee about the story and I was we were going through it together, um, I asked her. I was like, you know, the the angel said, "Hey, I bring you great news, great tidings of great joy," and I can't think so. Okay, you know. all right. So what if? You, somebody appeared in the sky and said, hey everyone, I have the cure for COVID. No one will ever get sick. Everything will can go back to normal. You can see your family again. You can play with your friends. You can go to school. Everything, everything's over. COVID is done and it's already available for everyone. How, how happy would you be? I know I would be so happy. And we've only lived with this for nine months. So think of how happy the shepherds would have felt when they see someone show up in the sky and it says, he's here. The Savior has finally come. He's here. He's born today. Now, this isn't just they've been waiting for this for nine months. Like we have, this is the hope that they have been waiting for their whole lives and their parents' whole lives. And keep going thousands of years through occupation, through um, the Israelites being taken as slavery most several times, and through Moses, through David, through Noah, through Abraham, through Adam and Eve, when God said, your only hope is Jesus, and I'm going to find a way for us to be back together again.
Week four, joy. Today we light the fourth candle of the Advent season, the candle of joy. True joy, the joy that comes from the Lord, is neither dependent on others or circumstances. It is a fruit of the Spirit that wells up in our hearts as we rejoice and delight in Christ our salvation. Today, as we celebrate Christ, the source of all joy, we remember that he came to give us abundant life and joy unspeakable. Luke 2, 10 through 11, then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I want you to do something for me this morning. I want you to think back to your favorite Christmas morning memory. Do you have a favorite story from Christmas morning where maybe you woke up as a child and came into a living room full of presents or uh, maybe you had a Christmas morning with family that meant something special to you. I want you just to think about that this morning and maybe after church today, I want you to share that story with someone else. Uh, for me, I have a couple of those memories. I remember uh, distinctly back when I was six years old, my brother would have been uh, two years old. I remember waking up that Christmas morning, running in the living room to see what our, our presents were. And my brother was into Barney the dinosaur. And so there was this Barney the dinosaur uh, car, you know, for kids, the little car that you sit on and you push with your legs. And he had gotten the Barney car for Christmas that year. And not only did he get a Barney car, but he also got a stuffed animal Barney. And my parents had set it up in a way where Barney was sitting on the dinosaur car uh, as if he were driving the car. And as soon as my brother came into the room, he ran right over to the car and he sucker punched the stuffed animal Barney right off of the car and sat on the car himself. It was, uh, it was Grand Theft Auto at its finest. Uh, I just remember just laughing so hard at you know my brother. He didn't even care about the stuffed animal. He just punched it. It's like, get off my car. This is my car now. And just the, the joy that he had in that moment and the joy I had in that moment, just laughing and, and seeing that, that, um, that reaction that he had. I also remember Christmas morning, 1996. 
and the hot toy, uh, the hottest item uh, on the market that year to get for Christmas was a Nintendo 64. And would you believe it? Almost all of them, I, I, I'm sure, were sold out. It was the hard to find item, but I remember waking up that Christmas morning and um, having a Nintendo 64 hooked up to the TV, waiting for me and my brother to, to sit down and, and play some games on it. And so uh, I spent many years and, and many good hours um, playing video games on that Nintendo 64. And to this day, I still think the Nintendo 64 is one of the best video game consoles ever made. If you disagree with me, I will fight you because I, uh, I, I grew up on that gaming system and it was so much fun, so many countless hours. But you could imagine the joy that I had uh, waking up and seeing that on that Christmas morning. You see, uh, there are so many things that can bring us joy, and presents are just one of those things. Christmas isn't all about presents. It's not all about waking up and, and having something. You know, for, for me and my brother, we were very blessed to have parents that, um, that, that you know, had, had jobs and that uh, were able to afford things and were able to, to give to us things on Christmas morning. And so we were uh, very grateful, and I'm still very grateful uh, for those experiences as a child. But when we talk about joy, uh, joy can come from so many different places. Most of the time we experience joy when a, a bad situation ends up um, turning out for the better, or a bad situation ends up uh, you know, showing some kind of, of hope or some kind of light at the end of the tunnel where when you get to the end of that situation, life is so much better. And so that's where uh, immense joy joy really comes from. And so, as I said, there are so many things that can bring us joy. I know in the current situation we're in, in this world and in our nation, uh, we could use some joy right now. We are uh, on the tail end of an incredibly hard year. 2020 has been an infamous year and will go down as an infamous year in history just because of the things that we've had to deal with this year. We've dealt with uh, this pandemic. Uh, we've dealt with a crazy election cycle this year, and it's not over. I mean, there, there, there are still a lot of these things and the ramifications of those things going on. And uh, turning on the news is, is hard to, to do because uh, there's just so much negativity out there. We hear stories of family or friends that have contracted the virus. or Some people uh, have lost loved ones. Uh, in fact, uh, at the time of me recording this sermon, over 300,000 people in our nation alone have died from the coronavirus. And so that uh, is just an astronomical number and uh, it, it's so sad to see. And so for us this morning, as we, uh, as we lit the fourth Advent candle, the candle of joy, some of us are thinking, man, I could really use some joy right now. And so this morning, what I wanna do is I wanna turn your attention to a passage in the New Testament that really highlights what true joy is all about, the whole meaning of Christmas. And a lot of times when you think about the Christmas story, when you think about um, turning to scripture to read some kind of Christmas story, you, you usually would go to Matthew or Luke because that is where your traditional Christmas stories are found. You see a story with the wise men and you see the story with Jesus in the manger in Matthew. You see another story with with um, Jesus in the manger and Luke. But this morning, we're going to turn to the Gospel of John. John does not contain a traditional Christmas story, but he contains a different version of the Christmas story. And we're going to read that this morning. So if you have your Bible with you, um, turn with me to John chapter 1. And if you don't have your Bible, um, no worries. We'll have the words for you on the screen to read along. So John chapter 1, and I'm going to start reading in verse 1 this morning. Here's what John wrote. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him. 
Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. For from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who was at the Father's side. He was made him, he has made him known. And so we read these words this morning, exciting words, words that have so many implications for the entire world, especially when we talk about joy. And so this morning, that is what we're going to talk about. This joy uh, is, is something that is incredible, and it's something that we read about here in John. Uh, just a few weeks ago, I talked a little bit about John. John, uh, the apostle, the, one of the, the guys that was in Jesus' inner circle. You know, Jesus had his 12 uh, disciples that were traveling with him, that did ministry and life together with him. And within that uh, 12 uh, men, Jesus had kind of an inner circle. He had uh, Peter, James, and John. They were kind of his go-to disciples. And so John, uh, out of all the disciples, lived longer than uh, all the others. Uh, according to church tradition, he actually lived uh, well into his 90s and um, lived to a, a good old age and was the only apostle, according to church tradition, that was not martyred for his faith. He, he, he was the only one that got to outlive any type of martyrdom, though he was persecuted many times and he was tortured many times for his faith. And so at the end of his life, being uh, the last apostle, being the, the, the final uh, of the disciples living, a lot of the people in the church came up to John and said, hey, we think you should write your story down. We think you should write down uh, a gospel. You know, we have the gospel of Luke circulating around. We have the gospel of Matthew and Mark circulating around. But uh, John, we would like to hear the story from your perspective. You, you live lived uh, in that time. You got to walk with Jesus. We would like to hear your perspective on the whole thing. And so John said, okay, I'm going to take some time to sit down and write my own account, my own gospel. And so John writes out his own gospel, and, and this is how he begins it. John chapter 1, he writes out the words, in the beginning. And it's very fitting that he writes out those words in the beginning because that's how the entire Bible starts. Whenever you hear that phrase, in the beginning, you probably begin thinking about Genesis. That's how the Bible itself starts, in the beginning. And in Genesis, it's in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And here John is, say, uh, is starting his own gospel with the beginning. He's like, hey, uh, you know, where, where to begin? Well, let's go all the way back to the beginning of the world, beginning of creation. And so he says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And so we see John just begin to expound on this and just uh, really begin to tell the story of Jesus. Jesus was the Word. Jesus is with God. Uh, and it's this incredible um, picture of what joy looks like because not only is the Word God, not only was the Word there in the beginning, but in verse 14 you see that he writes, and the Word became flesh. You see, despite all the things that are going on in the world right now, despite all the injustices that have happened in the history of humanity, despite the sin that Adam and Eve fell into in the very beginning back in Genesis, we talked about that a few weeks ago, despite all that, God had a plan to overcome all those things. God had a plan to redeem and reconcile the world back to himself, and this was that plan. This is where our joy can come from this morning. Despite our bad situations that we find ourselves in, there is hope and there is great joy, and we should be rejoicing because of that. And so we see the Word became flesh. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So God himself became flesh. It's not your traditional 
Christmas story. It's not tra traditional telling of Mary and Joseph and the wise guys and the shepherds in the field, but it's a very simple, very well put story reminding readers, hey, Jesus is God and he was with God in the very beginning. Before the world was even created, he was with him. And Jesus himself is God, and he became flesh so that you and I could be redeemed, so that you and I could find hope and to find restoration despite all the bad things that we go through, despite our own shortcomings and our own sin. And so as we move into this Christmas time, you know, where this is the last Sunday of Advent, the last Sunday before Christmas, this is what we should reflect on. We should reflect on the joy that comes in serving a God who redeems us, serving a God who cares about us enough to send his only son to redeem us from ourselves. As I mentioned, this world is a hard world to live in, especially in 2020. You know, uh, I mean, look, I mean, we, we, we ran out of toilet paper, for God's sakes. I mean, look, this world has, uh, ha has been crazy. You know, the, 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 the virus, as I said, you know, we keep seeing the doom and gloom on the news. Uh, some of you have dealt with some personal shortcomings this year. Uh, maybe there's been an illness that you've dealt with or a friend or family member has dealt with. Uh, maybe there are some things that have happened to you based on your own decisions. Maybe your own sin has led to some of these shortcomings this year. But this morning, there is joy. As we read God, uh, the, the, the Gospel of John, and we, we see him begin by telling us about the Word becoming flesh, we see the joy that we can have as Christians when we see the hope that we have in the Savior who has come into this world. The one who created the world is the one who will save it. The one who created the world is the one who will save it. And so we see this incredible joy. And so the world is weary. Uh, the world is, uh, is broken. But God has done something about it. And the weary world rejoices because God became flesh. The weary world rejoices because God became flesh. It's such an incredible thing to look at the Gospel of John and to see the truth of who God is and the joy that we can have because God didn't just sit there and watch us um, completely destroy ourselves in our sin, but he sent his son to live and die for us so that we can be redeemed. And because of that, we can have joy and we should rejoice in everything that God has done. It has been his game plan all the way uh, since the beginning. And so it's something for us to latch onto this morning, latch onto during this Christmas season, latch onto uh, in the moments where we feel like life is failing us, or we feel like we've um, become such um, horrible people in our own sin. There is hope, there is joy in what John teaches us this morning. Uh, there's a story I read about a man who lived in the third century, and he was, uh, he was anticipating death. I'm not sure why he was anticipating death, but he was uh, in, in, um, in you know, bad health or, or whatnot. And so uh, as he's on his deathbed, he wrote a letter to a friend, and here's what he said in his letter. He said, it's a bad world, an, incre an incredibly bad world, but I have discovered in the midst of it a quiet and holy people who have learned a great secret. They have found a joy which is a thousand times better than any pleasure of our sinful life. They are despised and persecuted, but they care not. They are masters of their souls. They have overcome the world. These people are the Christians, and I am one of them. You see, the Christians of the early church were known for the way that they loved each other and the way they put others before themselves. You see that last verse that we read this morning uh, is a verse that might sound familiar because we read a similar verse uh, a few weeks ago. It says in verse 18, no one has ever seen God, the only God who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. This same John, the same John who wrote this passage we read this morning, wrote a passage we read a couple of weeks ago uh, in his letter of First John, where he said, no one has ever seen God. And he goes on to tell us that we see God through love. 
And so God himself is the word and God himself is love. And so when we begin to experience Jesus, when we learn about him and who he is, and when we begin to live like he lived, where we love one another as ourselves, then we begin to see God. We begin to see his presence and we begin to see his work in this world, in this world that is weary, in this world that seems to be failing, in this world where uh, there's just bad news every time you turn on the TV or every time you jump on social media, there can be joy because God became flesh, because God did something about it. And so that's why we have joy this morning. This man in the third century is writing about the craziness of Christians. He's like, hey, I have discovered these people. They sound crazy because they love others before themselves, uh, even though they are persecuted, even though it is illegal to be a Christian in the Roman Empire. They, ha- they are still joyfully living. And he's like, I, they are a strange people, but guess what? I'm one of them. And this morning, my question for you is, are you one of them? Are you a Christian? Are you a Christ follower? Are you one of those crazy people who can have joy in the midst of hard times? When the world is weary, when things look down, how are you allowing God to work through you? How are you allowing God to shine through you? A weary world rejoices because God became flesh. The weary world rejoices because God became flesh. Because God became flesh, we have meaning. We have purpose. We have joy. Because even though the world looks bad, God did something about it. And he's continually doing something about it. Even though it may not look like it at some times, God is at work. And as Christians, we have greater joy and greater hope knowing uh, what is to come when Jesus returns in the second advent. And so this morning, be reminded of this joy. Rejoice in this joy as you spend time with your family this Christmas. And I know it's going to be a different Christmas for the majority of us because a lot of us won't be traveling. A lot of us won't be seeing extended family this year. But take time to thank God for becoming flesh. Take time to to reflect on your relationship with him and take time to praise him and rejoice in who he is. Let's pray. Lord, this morning, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for being the word who was there in the very beginning. The word who spoke this world into existence with your own words. Who spoke life into existence. Who created something from nothing. Created humanity out of the dirt in this unformed world. We thank you for uh, seeing us through our own shortcomings as human beings, the sin that we allow to infect us, the sin we allow to keep us from loving others as we should. Lord, thank you for becoming flesh. Thank you for coming to live as a human, to live as one of us, to show us how to love, to teach us more about yourself and to reveal yourself to us in a way that no one ever thought could be possible. Lord, we can see you this morning because of your love and the way we show that love to others. The weary world can rejoice because you became flesh, and we are grateful for that this morning. So Lord, be with us during this Christmas time uh, and uh, allow us to uh, to reflect and to rejoice in the joy we have in you. It's in Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. The stars are brightly shining It is the night of the dear Savior's birth Long lay the world in sin and ever pining Till He appeared and the soul fell The thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks the new and glorious world. Fall on your knees. Oh, hear the angels.
angel voices all night divine all night when Christ was born all night divine Slave is our brother, then in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy, in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his own. Christ is the Lord Let ever, ever praise Thee Noel, Noel divine no joining us today online at Grace Covenant Church. Before you leave, please take a moment to consider giving a donation to our ministry. When we give, we are making an offering to God as a way of giving back to Him with what He has blessed us with. We offer several convenient ways to give. You can give online by going to our website at www.gracecovssf.com give. You can also text any dollar amount to 84321 to give by text. Let's stay connected. Follow us on social media and sign up for our email newsletter by going to the homepage of our website. Thanks for watching. We will see you again soon. Hello, guys. My name is Jenny. I'm a little gay. We need this on all over again. Hello, my. Hello. Watching their flock in the field.